All right, my party friends, I am late with the update, but I am back and it is time to talk some punk. So grab yourself your beverage of choice, buckle up, and let's get the crazy train on the road. This is my update for this month for Panning Punk. I am a couple of days late. Yeah, well, you know, it's always one thing or another. But before we get into all of that stuff, I'd love to remind you, if you would be so kind, to please do all of the things. You know what they are. I need you, if you haven't, to consider subscribing to my channel because there's a lot of craziness that comes along with this and you don't want to miss any of it. So you might want to ring the notification bell too. If you like this, if at any time I make you giggle, if you learn something from me, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Whatever floats your boat. You know how these things work. Okay, so the deets on this project, in case you don't know, this is a Fantastic Ladies collab. It was created by Allie, who is Wonder in Allyland. All that's linked below. You know how this rolls. She came up with a fantastic list of punk songs and prompts for us. And this is a monthly updated rolling style project. Um, it started January 1st, runs through December 31st. Four to six prompts of the 20 on her list, but we're allowed to add in. We can either reuse the prompts with a new product, roll our own in, um, yeah, pretty much the usual stuff. You know how this goes. Hashtag on this is panning punk. Okay, so let's talk about what I had going on. And like I said, I got a couple extra uses on some of these things because I'm a couple of days late. Day late, dollar short, kind of my theme song for life. Just as one of those things. All right, so I had from Jalon's list, the song by Depeche Mode, Personal Jesus, which is an item that is forgiving and fixes everything. I had brought in my Revolution Hydrate and Fix Spray. We were there, no we weren't, we started there, sorry, I had to make two marks on that. And then this is what I had last month, and as you can see, it's empty. Now this is gonna be going into my empties right away because I had tried to do this before the end of the month, I'm just running a little behind, so usually I wait until after I've done all of my updates and then put it in that month's empties, but, no worries, you'll see it again soon. So basically, what happened with that is I started at 102.8 grams, went down to 59.8. The package on that is about 33.9. I've used about 68.9 grams of product in two months. So that one went pretty well. That obviously is a rollout. All right, then we had, oh lordy, we have a mess. I always have a mess, but sometimes I have more of a mess than other times. Now, I can't figure out where all my note cards went. Yeah, I, I got nothing. I don't know where they actually went to remember what songs were with what. Oh, there it is. Wrong pile of note cards. I have got notes everywhere, people. I am just all over the board today. All right, so from Makeup with Lainey, I had the main song, Everything I Ask For, which is a Holy Grail product. Now, that's my Lancome Sills Booster. We started at 12 grams, went to 11.8, then 11.7. We're at 11.5, and that I have used 17 times, including today. Now, you're only supposed to use these eye products for about three months, and I think I'm going on four. <clears throat> I know I use them longer. It's just the way I am because I don't do makeup every day or even like Monday through Friday thing like a lot of people do. But I am going to pull this from the project. So note card and product getting set aside. should probably open up a new one. All right. Then I had done an entire Ramones episode, video, whatever it is you call my crazy ramblings. And I put in one of my all-time favorites, I Want to Be Your Boyfriend. And that's an item you recently fell in love with or you got because of a hard sell. We knew I put in my Lancome Advan Advanced Genifique. You know, the fancy one that I can never pronounce properly because I only speak English and sometimes I do that badly. All right, so we started, this is the Youth Activating Concentrate. My goal is to finish because I use this all the time. We started at 118.2 grams. Last month we were down to 108.7. We're now at 98 even, so we're getting use. It's still going. You can't tell when it's empty until it gets down to this clear part at the bottom. So I think I still have about half a bottle left. Not quite sure, but my whole goal with this was to see how long it takes me to use it. So that's going strong, staying in the project. Okay really notes everywhere uh then violent femmes blister in the sun was a song that i brought in because of the weezer song that i decided to change because this is what it reminded me of so i did a product with an spf and i grabbed my bizarre l'oreal true match foundation my 56 center if you hadn't seen my last one and just in case i never told you i do playlists with all of these um projects that i do if you ever want to go back and watch stuff 
So I did exactly 10 uses because I really did want to track weight on this and I had set it aside then. And it is now 63.2 grams. We were at 66.8 grams last month and that's with 10 uses in there. So that's not too bad. It holds up pretty well. This never settles. And I can never see through it. So I truly do not know how much is left in this bottle, but I do love it and it is a perfect match. So I'm going to pull that out, but it's a good product and if you like those kinds of foundations, I definitely recommend it. And it's easier to find the shades other than my C1 Alabaster Cool than, you know, the stuff normal people wear on like me. Okay. So one of the other things I brought in, this was my whole, last month was my whole episode of changing all the songs that reminded me of something else. So I brought in Breed by Nirvana instead of the one that Allie had on her list. And I did it as something you don't really care about. And so that was the Benefit Give Me Brow this size, which is, I don't know. I don't know if that's a full size or not. This is not my area, which is why it's something I don't care about. We went from, actually we went from 9.8 grams and with 17 uses, we're still at 9.8 grams. I really don't use a lot of this stuff and I don't use it quickly apparently. So we're going to leave it in and we'll see how many more uses I get out of it since this is month two and I, well, I don't know how long I've had it open, but we're going to leave it in for another month. Let's just leave it at that. <clears throat> you know how I am. All right, so then I did pull Blondie, but I did not do Heart of Glass. Once again, I did A Girl Should Know Better, something you know you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have gotten, but you did it anyway. So with that, I went with the Disney House of Siage, and you'll be happy to know the way that I have done this is that I have written everything out on my card and kept track of how many times I've used each thing. So my goal is five uses total, but I'm kind of fudging a little bit because I'd like to do five on the Mickey Mouse face, the blush and highlighter duo, which is lovely. I wasn't sure about the color, but oh, I am so pleasantly surprised. I really do enjoy it. And then we have the Minnie Mouse version. This is so reflective. I hope you can see that. But that's the eyeshadow quad. And I really, I've been cheating. I'm not messing up the bow in the middle. I'm kind of working around it. But I have used the colors. I've used every color in there. And they came with a cute little lip gloss with Mickey and Minnie on it. And then the two lipsticks that go into the lipstick case. Uh, one is a neutral and one is a red. So the way this breaks down is aside from the gloss, which I've only used once, I've used every other piece of this twice. I took a day specifically and did the neutral. I did a day specifically with the red lip just so I could give them some equal time. But I will switch back and forth with my other three uses as I use the eye and cheek products too. So that's staying in. I'm pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure how much color payoff I was going to get from this. And it has really shocked me how nice that eyeshadow really is. I wasn't expecting a lot from it, but I'm kind of happy. You can't do a lot of variety with the looks, but the look you get comes out real nice if you like pinks. So that's where we're at with that. Okay, so then, I have, like I said, no cords everywhere. Then I did bring in one from Allie's list because I do try and not screw up other people's original projects too much, although I do make alterations. You guys know this. So I did Blink-182, What's My Age Again? An older product in my collection. And I grabbed the OGX Coconut Milk. And I didn't put a line on it. I've got my Jumbo Sharpie here. We'll fix that right up. Because I have been using it. Not a ton, but you can see if I tilt it how much of the product I've used. And honestly, you guys, I don't recommend it. I don't like it. And quite frankly, I'm only using it because it's in this project. I'm going to leave it in. I'm not even tracking number of uses. I'm just trying to get some use. It's an older product. I was looking for more of an oil, I think, like a hair oil. And that is almost more of a gloss. And if I put too much on, it makes my hair almost look like wet or greasy. And I have seriously, I mean seriously dry hair. This is fresh wash today with moisture cream and everything else in it. And every part of me is dry. That does not do what I need it to do, nor what I like for my hair to do. So I'm using it. We'll see how long until I just give up the ghost and toss it. Because honestly, I probably got my money's worth out of it. Since I don't actually like it to do what I want it to do. Or it doesn't do what I want it. You know what I mean. Okay, so that's where we are at. That is everything we have had in, everything that is going on. I'll sort out all my silly, crazy notes later. But this month, 
I wanted to talk a little bit about CBGBs. Now, CBGB, it's CBGB and OMFUG. Country, bluegrass, blues, and other music for uplifting gourm- gourmandizers. Gourmandizers? I don't know how to exactly say that word. But what the word means is a voracious eater of music. And this is the club that was started on the Bowery in New York City by uh, Hillary Crystal. It opened in 1973. It closed in October of 2006. Now, the location of the original building was added to it's the National Register of Historic Places in 2013. Since the venue itself has closed, and there was a shop next door that was like a record store at one point, some different things too, but there are a lot of people that say this is the birthplace of punk for New York. There are others that argue punk is a state of mind, so there can't actually be a birthplace, and I'm not going to do the debate with you guys. Safe to say, CBGB's was kind of the place when punk was at the ground level in this country, in New York, for all of the bands that came out of that era. Now, um, there was a CBGB radio launched in 2010, and then the music festival, which is supposed to be the largest festival in New York, was launched in 2012. There are several bands from the 70s that came out of this era, and some of these are really obscure, like even for me. And so I kind of went with what I could find. I'm going to actually link the videos down below for you if you want to go see. And I went back and I pulled songs that I could find the videos from that era. Not from them performing them somewhere else or from them performing them later because CBGB's was open for quite some time. So it was basically when these bands were in their infancy and that's the video stuff that I wanted to pull from. So some of these aren't even my favorite songs by some of these bands, but I kind of liked having the video reference to go with it. So that's what we're doing. Now, we've already talked about the Ramones. They're big from coming out of there. We've got a Blondie song. We all know how big Blondie got. Um, The Talking Heads came out of there and Psycho Killer was probably their first hit and that was one that Jaylon added on her update so that one I did not include but we've got bands like the Misfits who are included in Allie's original list also television the Patti Smith group Dead Boys Dictators the Cramps Joan Jett the police and the B-52s played back in the day at CBGB's now in the 80s it turned to hardcore punk so I'm not really touching on that this time I'm pretty much just sticking with the original 70s group. So unless you're older than me and from that area, there's probably a lot of these that you've never heard of or never seen or maybe don't know a lot about. I mean, there were a couple that I really wasn't super familiar with. There were quite a few that I was, obviously, with loving punk for as long as I have. But what I decided to throw in here this time, we have got, these are some of the biggest that have come out of there, honestly. The very first band to play at CBGB's was television. So the song that I picked from television is called Blank Generation. And the prompt that I decided would be a product you could take or leave. Now, the Dead Boys, who honestly, I don't know a whole lot about. I don't know how popular they were in other places. But they do have some big hits and they did have quite a following. I grabbed their song Sonic Reducer with the idea that the prompt should be an item that makes you feel 10 feet tall, and that is based on the lyrics. And then, one of my all-time favorite bands from this era, from the CBGB's area, is a band called The Shirts. Now, their lead singer, Annie Golden, was in the band, and they formed in 1975. They played from like 75 to 81 at CBGB's. They reformed in 2003, and they're still active. Annie Golden was the lead singer, and at one point, she was actually filming the movie Hair. So she was flying back and forth to film and then perform and all this other stuff. I don't know exactly what they did during um, their hiatus from the band, but obviously they are back active again, and I really, really love their stuff. It's um, a bubblegum punk, so it's kind of poppy and dancey and a lot of fun, and I really like Annie Golden's voice, so that's one of my favorites out of there. I picked the song Teenage Crutch and the prompt is a product you wish you had as a teenager. Unlike the other prompt we have, which was a teenage staple, I figured we should, especially with someone my age, there were things that didn't exist then that do now. And so there are some things that I really wish I did have back in the day, but I thought that was kind of a fun one. Now, 
I also picked probably one of the better known bands that came out of there is the Heartbreakers. And I'm not talking Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I'm talking the band, the Heartbreakers, which actually started with two guys from New York Dolls who had been around before, obviously. And it was Johnny Thunders and Jerry Nolan. So they actually left the New York Dolls. They were very into heroin. It became an issue. They left the New York Dolls. They formed this new band. They actually got um, Richard Hell from television and Walter Lure from the Demons. And that's how they formed the band. Their stuff, honestly, is awesome. If it, It's really garage-sounding punk, in my opinion. Not the best singers in the world. Um, obviously, the heroin addiction probably played into a lot of how that all went down. And as a spoiler alert, because you know at some point, being in Minnesota, I'm going to do the replacements. The song, Johnny's Gonna Die, Paul Westerberg wrote that about Johnny Thunders after seeing him. So just a weird, interesting tie-in. But um, what I picked, although not my favorite song by them, is Pirate Love. And I did that with the prompt, an item that makes you feel like that girl. Uh, that's also based on the lyrics. They have one album, and there was some weird stuff that happened like with the master tapes. But now that the master tapes have been found, and this is like decades later from when they originally did them, the album is LAM, LAMF, Like a Mother Effer, basically is what that stands for. And they do a cover of Chinese Rock, which is the song that was written by Dee Dee Ramone, and the Ramones had a big hit with it. And then they cover um, Do You Love Me, which a lot of you are probably going to know from the movie Dirty Dancing. It's the one, Do You Love Me? Do You Love Me Now That I Can Dance? Really made it punk. Really cool song. Um, like I said, not my favorite song of the whole album that I picked, but one of the ones that I could actually find video for. And it may only be audio on this one. One of them, I couldn't find the video, but I could find the audio from back in the day. So that's what I'm including with it. If you look at their stuff later, because they, they played at CBGB's early on, and then also later on before Johnny Thunders died. And he was literally so bad at the end that... Uh, I think it's Pirate Love that there's a version of, too, where he's singing and he literally says into the mic, I forgot the words, and holds the mic to the crowd for them to say the lyrics because he completely forgot the verse. He did not do real well at the end, and, you know, he, those things, it's rock and roll, it's punk, it's heroin. I mean, you know all the contributing factors here. So it's kind of a sad story because there was some talent there, and he started in the music business at a really young age, so it's kind of a bummer to see. But at the same time, what they did put out was is pretty cool. So I thought it deserved a really strong mention in here. And then the last one that I picked, because I had to, is actually Patti Smith. I'm not the world's biggest Patti Smith fan, but she was there in the early days, and she actually was the one who performed the final concert. She played the final show on October 15th, 2006. Now, back when this started in the 70s with her, she already was like this iconic figure and had this huge following because of her poetry. So when she was doing the stuff with the band, she already had a built-in crowd that she was bringing along with her. And if you go back and look at different things about CBGBs, like Hilly Crystal does talk about how she was so well-known that she brought the crowd to the bar. Because the bar was in a crappy neighborhood. We're talking derelicts, prostitutes, drug addicts, the whole nine yards. This is not someplace that you just go out clubbing for the night. This was really, really low rent district type of situation. But came out with some of the best music from the entire 70s era when you think about it. I mean, it's an entire genre. So the song I picked for this is a song called Kimberly. Now, the reason I picked this song is because of the history of the song. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail with this. I, I try not to get too much into each of the bands that I'm picking up, but I'm trying to give you just a little nugget of something. So this song is actually about Patty's little sister. Her name was Kimberly, or is Kimberly. I think she's still alive. Um, she's 12 years younger than Patty Smith. They lived in new low-rent development housing when Kimberly was born, and they lived across, or they lived by a marsh, and across the street from them was an old farm. So at one point, Patty 
the barn caught on fire. Patty was holding Kimberly in her arms and went outside and watched the barn burn down across the street from where she was living. And basically, it was just an abandoned barn, and nobody was rushing out to help these people. It was very low income. It was a really tough time for her and her family at that point. But that is... I mean, she's from the projects. Basically, that's what they built them as. But that's what this song is actually about. It talks about her holding the baby in her arms and watching this happen. And it, it's a beautiful song. And it's really cool how she could take words and put them in poems or put them to lyric, you know, make them lyrics for songs and stuff. I think it's just a really beautiful, like, nod to her sister, an acknowledgement of her upbringing, and kind of gives a little bit of a background as to what type of person Patti Smith is. I mean, she's known for all kinds of humanitarian things. She's, I think she's a, an ambassador for something or another. I mean, she's been around for decades. Even when she stopped performing music for quite a while, she still had a huge following for all of her different activities, her art in general. All right, so that is what I have decided to include for my CBGB's episode, as it were. But now let's talk about what I'm going to be rolling in because I am going to roll in a few things here simply because I had some rollouts and I needed some new stuff to put in. So what I, and don't forget, I have these songs linked below videos for them. So you can go check those out if you want. So I am adding this, this, it is the heritage stone, rose petals, rose water spray. It is for the television song, Blank Generation, a product you could take or leave. This came in some kind of a box of something or another. And as much as I like rose oil for like soothing, I don't know that this really does it. I use it mostly to spray my brushes for like eyeshadows and stuff. But we're here. I put some tape on it. We're going to put this into finish. And it's starting at 45.8 grams. So that can go back in my bathroom. Okay, now... Since I had rolled out the Revolution Spray, and I am working on some others too, I decided for the song Kimberly by Patti Smith, I'm putting in a budget item because of them living in the projects, and I grabbed my e.l.f. Makeup Mist, Mist, Mist and Set, a couple of words there, I don't have glasses on, you guys know I can't see anything. So I want to finish this, we're starting at 134.1 grams, and I put tape on this and marked it. You guys, I don't know if you guys can see through it. You can kind of see it moving around with the lights. But at least this one is, I can see through the sides of the bottle. So I'll be able to track that nice and easily for you. And then, one last thing before I let you good people go. I did pull in from Ellie's List, My Chemical Romance, the song Welcome to the Black Parade, which is a black eyeshadow. Now, I have dismantled most of my NARS duos. And there are a couple of other oddball things shoved in here, but most of these are my NARS duos. And there is a lovely, okay, they're stuck in there now, but in here is a gorgeous black shade. This and this white one were from the Pandora duo, which I don't think you can get anymore. But I'm going to pull in my black for 10 uses, and you'll see this again. Like I said, once I pull them apart, there was still some glue on the back, so I can't get them out of the stupid palette now. But we're pulling in the black part of Pandora Duo for 10 uses for this project for the My Chemical Romance song. All right, everybody. Thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for letting me ramble on about CBGBs. I hope you all enjoyed yourself. Everything you need to know will be linked down below. And that's all I got for you. Till next time. See ya. Bye.